Hey, we were successful this time. I went straight to the Polycom. I didn't use the microphone, so um, I'm going to have to get a class again on the, on the Polycom. But I hope you all had a beautiful week last week. I know you all truly enjoyed the Shabbat service and the message. And Lord Pastor Dowell is definitely, you know, he always hears from the Most High. But, yeah, I can definitely tell you all is trying to get us ready for his feast days, his holy feast days. Um, you know, that message yesterday, definitely uh, one that you want to listen to many times to encourage your hearts, to let you know your status in the Most High. And, uh, man, it was beautiful. Uh, it's incredibly edifying. We can sure know that Yah really, truly loves us. Hallelujah. Hey, good to see you all in the, in the chat tonight. Um, Brother Ugly, always appreciate you being here and, and doing the... Uh, work behind the scenes there for, you know, keeping the saints up with the scriptures and the definitions. Blessing Sister Mara out there in California, and Brother Josh in Virginia, good to see you on. Sister Sila, bless you, my sister. And um, Rosh, Annie, uh, well, I, I can't tell you who that is, but Glory of the King, glad you have on board. And, and Brother Sean, good to have on board. Uh, and those are calling in by telephone and listening uh, over the internet. Good to have you all on tonight. Uh, I do want to give thanks and praise to the Most High, my King of King, and uh, thank Him for this week. Thank Him for His precious blood and uh, for forgiveness of my sins and for bringing me this way, for calling me, for choosing me, and allowing me to serve Him in His kingdom. What a privilege and what an honor. And I'm so thankful for that. I don't think I'll be with you too long tonight. It's going to be, um, you know, it's not going to be probably more than an hour, but uh, if you saw the title tonight, it's called <clears throat> um, Trumpets, the Day of Remembrance, and uh, we'll get into that, of course, in the study. As we know, Yah's Holy Feast Days are right at the door as Fall Feast and the significance they have. Um, you know, we only have... A, the shadow, but in, in due time it's going to be fulfilled completely in our Savior, Jesus Christ. So it's these things that we ought to keep in our mind, keep focused on, um, you know, keep at the forefront always, uh, especially coming these seasons, because they are Yah's holy feast days. Um, and He's allowing us as His people to, you know, participate, to celebrate to remember and embrace all of them so with that we're going to get started again thank you all for joining in tonight for those of you who may not know this is elder douglas specker um an elder with straightway ministries all right the, the title again is trumpets and it's called the day of remembrance and um we're going to explain a little bit more why it's called the Day of Remembrance. Um, we're used to speaking and declaring it as the Feast of Trumpets, but in reality, it, Trumpets is there just to signify this day that the Most High commanded for Israel to keep. And we're going to talk about that. All right, unlike all the other set-apart appointed times that Yahweh instructed Israel to keep, what we commonly refer to as the Feast of Trumpets had not been given a specific reason for that particular appointed time. There is no distinct hard fact of what that day was supposed to signify, unlike, say, the weekly seventh-day Shabbat, or the Passover slash Feast of Unleavened Bread, or Tabernacles, which were meant to be reminders of the captivity in Egypt and the liberation from its bondage or of the Day of Atonement, which was a clear display of reconciliation for our sins, or the Feast of First Fruits, uh, Shavuot, Pentecost, which marked the harvest of the spring crops and the giving of the Ten Commandments. So what was Israel to recall to mind, to be reminded of, to remember on that day? Talking about what we commonly call Feast of Trumpets. Was it an event or happening which had already taken place? Or was it more directed to events which would come at a future date from the time it was given, from at that time that it was given to Israel? All right, I'm going to break down seven uh, uh, facts about this Feast of uh, the Day of Remembrance. 
All right, number one. Number one, this day is to be held annually on the first day of the seventh month, which is Trishri. Tishri, uh, I'm not the best with pronunciation of the month, but yes, the first day of the seventh month. This day was declared as a Sabbath day of rest. No other first day of the month of the 12 months in the year were designated as a Sabbath day of rest. A Sabbath day to stop, rest, and reflect, remember. This day is set apart from all the other 11 moon entrances of the coming of the new moon of all the other 11 months. So it's specific just to the seventh month, the first day of the month. This day is a holy convocation, which we know is a time to gather and read the Torah to the people. Yah knew that Israel, once in their own lands, would have the Levites implanted amongst them and that they would read before the people. Just something I have in my notes when they were when they were actually established in their borders. This day was a memorial day, a day of remembrance. This day was marked by the sounding of trumpets, shofars, and, of course, sacrifices. This day was considered a day of feasting and joy. This day required sacrifices over and above the usual sacrifices that you would see when the new moon came in on each first of every month. So there was a difference as well in the amount of sacrifices on the first day of the seventh month um, and the day of remembrance. All right, Leviticus chapter 23, of course, that is the chapter that outlines and defines for the most part the, uh, the feast and the appointed times of the Most High and the significance behind them. All right, Leviticus chapter 23, verses 23 and through 25. Verses 23 through 25. We're going to look at these three verses. We're going to break them down a little bit to get a more well-rounded, well-rounded idea of what it means behind the, the words, the definition behind the words as we read them off the page. And again, this is from the King James Version for those of you who are make, taking notes. And Yahweh spake unto Moshe, saying... Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, In the seventh month, in the first day of the month, shall you have a Shabbat, a memorial of blowing of trumpets and holy convocation. Um, and again, uh, you shall do no servile work therein, but you shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Most High. So we have Yah establishing it for Israel in writing, so to speak, in Leviticus 23. As, as Moshe, he was given it to Moshe and he gave it to the people. So Yah is declaring this feast day on the seventh month, the first day of the month, he calls it a memorial. And what sets it apart is this day or this memorial, and we're going to look behind the word, and a lot of the words in Leviticus 23:24. It was marked or was signified by the blowing of trumpets. And a lot of times we hear the Feast of Trumpets, some people may think unconsciously that it, its focus is on the trumpet, but it's not. The focus is on the day and to remember a particular point about that day. And the trumpets are there to signify that day, to, uh, to bring a remembrance because Yah doesn't want us to miss the importance of this day. So he declares it um, by the blowing of the trumpets. All right, the word Sabbath. We're going to pick apart Leviticus 23:24, And the, the Sabbath, as it's declared in 23:24, you shall have a Sabbath. It's the Hebrew 76, 77. This is in the Brown Driver Briggs definition. And um, Sabbath observance, Sabbath, Sabbatism, a weekly Sabbath, a day of atonement, sabbatical year, the Feast of Trumpets of the first and last days of the Feast of Tabernacles. So it actually says when this Hebrew word 76, 76, it breaks down in the Brown Driver's 
for you already where this is used. So if you were, were to look at atonement, you would see the same Sabbath de designation or definition also on the first and last days of the Feast of Tabernacles. I don't know why it doesn't have unleavened bread here. I didn't go with that deep, but it does say the Feast of Trumpets, so it is significant to the Feast of Trumpet this particular Sabbath day. And it's also a holy convocation. We do know so for our work therein. It's also a memorial as it's commanded, a memorial, a blowing of the trumpets. And this is the Hebrew 2146. This is a simple breakdown. It's, it's a Brown Driver Briggs again. It's, it's just basically a reminder and a remembrance. So the word memorial is nothing more than a reminder of something or a remembrance of something. So we have in the seventh month, in the first day of the month, you shall have a Shabbat, a remembrance or a reminder of the of blowing of trumpets, okay? So we already know that's where the significance comes from. In fact, if you look and do some research, there are people out there that, that don't call it the Feast of Trumpets. They, they call it the Day of Remembrance, and rightly so, because that's what it is. Um, and it, it's from the... Um, Brown Diver Briggs Strong's number 2142, which is another breakdown farther because of the word that's used, the Hebrew word zikro, and it comes from zakar. And the Brown Diver Briggs, again, definition, it means to remember, recall, call to mind, to remember, to recall, to be brought to remembrance, to be remembered, be thought of, be brought to mind. So all the definitions that you see in, in the Hebrew 2142 and the Brown Driver Briggs points us all right back that it's, it's something to recall to mind, to remember, um, to be thought of uh, again and again and again. So that's it's signifying when it says it's a day of memorial. Memor it's a memorial day, so to speak. And the word blowing of trumpets, they use that as one word. It's just not trumpets in Leviticus 23:24. So when you have a memorial of blowing of trumpets, the Strong's takes the blowing of trumpets and defines that whole the whole whole three word phrase right there. And it's Hebrew eighty six forty three Turah, and it's from the Hebrew seventy three twenty one. This is in the Strong's this time, brother ugly, and it means clamor. That is acclamation of joy or a battle cry, especially clangor of trumpets as an alarm. A blowing of the trumpets, joy, jubilee, loud noise, rejoicing, shouting. So it can it it that particular phrase covers a, a wide range of things. And if you look in Numbers 10, uh, the first what 12 verses or something in chapter 10, it breaks down when Yah instructs Moshe to construct two um, silver trumpets, and he breaks down how the trumpets are to be used. And we know here that. Um, because it's the Hebrew 86:43 that Yah uses, or that's written in, or is the breakdown, the Hebrew root Torah in Leviticus 23:24 that takes us right back to Numbers 10, and we'll look at that later just to prove that's where it came from. But <laughs> it here it signifies also so the you know the silver trumpets, and, and it also later on we're going to find out too that it also means. Uh, the shofar, the ram's horn. So they were both interchangeable, apparently. All right, I said it was from the Hebrew 73:21, and that is ruah, and primitive root to mar, especially by break and figuratively to split the ears, meaning it's a very loud, piercing sound. That is, shout for alarm or joy, blow an alarm, cry, alarm aloud. Destroy, make a joyful noise, smart, shout for joy, sound an alarm, triumph. So that's just a breakdown. Sorry, give me a second. I'm getting texts. People must not realize I'm on the air. All right. Anyway, glory to the king. And so what I'm going to do is, so I got some of uh, um, Leviticus 23, 24 from some other um, Bibles that I have, and I'm going to read as the way that they're written in the other Bibles. I'm going to give you the names of the Bibles 
that I'm reading from so you can see and kind of start to get a clarity of what um, we read in the King James, how it's broken down and brings more clarity in the mind about what what this day of remembrance and how it's proclaimed and how it's written in other uh, publications. All right, the revised standard version, Brother Ugly, I understand you may not have all these, so no big deal, so I'll just go ahead and read them. But the revised standard version says, Say to the people of Israel, remember, this is all Leviticus 23:24. In the seventh month, on the first day of the month, you shall observe a day of solemn rest, a memorial proclaimed with blast of trumpets, a holy convocation. So either the RSV says this is a memorial, and it's proclaimed or it's announced with the blast of trumpets. Again, the focal point is trumpets. Feast of Trumpets is not so much the trumpets, it's the day that we're supposed to remember. All right, the Israelite Samaritan version of the Torah, which I have in my library, <clears throat> says, Speak to the sons of Yisrael, saying, In the seventh month, on the first of the month, you shall have a Sabbath rest, a reminder, a blowing, a holy reading. Remember, the root word out of Leviticus 20-24 was memorial. And so you can see by the Israelite Samaritan version of the Torah, they actually used the word reminder. <clears throat> okay, the Hebrew Bible, the Hebrew Bible, help me Jesus, the Hebrew Bible by Robert Alter. Um, this is a, if you go on Amazon or someplace, and you can get, it's a three-volume set of the, the Old Covenant, the Old Testament, um, the Torah, the, you know, and the uh, writings and the prophets. I really enjoy looking at the book. The guy did an extensive job into going back through and, um, you know, trying to get it as correct and as right as he could from all the, the manuscripts and all the, um, you know, the things available to get the most accurate, at least he believes the most accurate, recounting of the, the Hebrew Old Covenant. Again, this is out of the Hebrew Bible. Robert Alters, the, uh, the the one that authored this or composed this. And the Master, or the Most High, spoke to Moshe, saying, "Speak to the Israelites, saying, In the seventh month, on the first of the month, you shall have a Sabbath, a commemoration with horn blast, a most sacred convocation." So. Here he's actually declaring it as a commemoration or a time to be remembered or a day to be remembered and it's ushered in with the horn blast, a most sacred convocation. <laughs> and lastly, the Amplified Bible, and it says, Say to the Israelites, on the first day of the seventh month, you shall observe a day of solemn rest, a sabbatical rest, a memorial day announced by blowing of trumpets, a holy assembly. So again, it's the day that's remembered. It's it's uh, it's a day of remembrance. It's a memorial day, and it's announced or heralded or proclaimed or marked by the blowing of the trumpets. The focus isn't so much on the trumpets as it is on the day that we're supposed to remember. But the trumpets um, are sounded. It doesn't tell you anywhere how often they're sounded. Um, you know, what I've read, even though you can't find any proof anywhere how often they're supposed to be sounded, um, there's a consensus out there that they were sounded all through the day. Right? As a, and you think about it. You know, I thought about this as I was doing this study when Israel was in its own land. Can you imagine that um, even though they were scattered, you know, miles apart, they had different borders, all the tribes, that if everybody was on that day sounding their shofars on that single day, I imagine you could hear that um, sounding all the way across the land, all at the same time, repeatedly throughout the day. Uh, it probably would have been an incredible sound, and obviously it's going to mimic what we're going to hear when Yahshua comes back. It just When he comes back, it declares it as a single trumpet, and you hear the sound of the trumpet. Right, so but it's going to be one trumpet that the whole earth will hear, hear. So this definitely is something of a shadow of that. All right, 
Numbers chapter 29, verse 1. Numbers chapter 29, verse 1. Back in the King James. It says, And in the seventh month, on the first day of the month, you shall have a holy convocation. You shall do no no servile work, it is a day, meaning a singular day, of blowing the trumpets unto you. So it's the day where the trumpets are blown on this day, this holy convocation, this memorial day, this day of remembrance. Numbers chapter 10, uh, verse 10. Numbers 10, verse 10. Also on the day of your gladness, and in your solemn days, we're going to break down Numbers 10.10 because it's important, and in the beginnings of your month, you shall blow with the trumpets over your burnt offerings and over your sacrifices of your peace offerings, that they may be to you for memorial before, which means in the presence of uh, Yah, I am Yahweh the Elohim. So we have again, also on the day of your gladness, and that that term like that, the day of your gladness, could have been like when David and the Israelites brought the ark back into the city, or when Solomon brought it back into the temple, right? This was definitely a day of gladness. It wasn't necessarily on a feast day or anything, but it was a, a, a day that was much heralded, and they they sounded the trumpets on that day. You can go read it. I think it's in First Kings and uh, other places where, um, you know, you, you'll read how they when the ark was brought and how they sounded the trumpets and the singers sang and uh, all them type of things. But anyway, also in the day of your gladness, in your solemn days, in the beginning of your months, you shall blow with the trumpets over your burnt offerings and over the sacrifice of peace offerings that they may be to you for a memorial before or in the presence of your Elohim. I am the Yahweh your Elohim. All right, memorial. Again, it's the same word used in Leviticus 23:24, just a reminder or remembrance or to mark something, which is the Hebrew 21:42. 42. Um, I don't know why I got that in my notes. Yeah, just standard protocol, typical soundings for these particular events because they were things that Yah designated. The beginning of your months would have been in the full moon, and <clears throat> over your burnt offerings, your sacrifice, your peace offerings. So Yah is declaring in Numbers 10, chapter 10, um, that these things are all reminders on these certain days that you're supposed to be doing. <clears throat> all right, solemn days, days that were meant to be taken seriously, those which were unlike any other days of the year, special and highly important, as was it was on... Uh, the feast or the day of remembrance and the, the blowing of trumpets on the first day of the seventh month. Um, what is the true meaning of solemn? Uh, the, the word solemn, as you look up in the dictionary, it means very serious or formal in matters. So these solemn days, these very serious days, these very formal days um, in your behavior, expression of solemn pr- procession, a solemn face. So basically, the breakdown solemn means something that's very serious, something to take. Um, a great note of something that's very important and Yah wants you to be on your P's and Q's on these days because he, he uh, put them out there for Israel and he expects us to embrace them fully and to take them seriously. All right. <clears throat> <coughs> Psalm 81, verses 1. Psalm 81, verses 1. Through, let me see, and I'm kind of going in and out of Psalm 81. I'll be going in and out and kind of bringing things in to highlight particular verses. But it's um, Psalm 81, 1 through 16. Psalm 81, 1 through 16. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, to the chief musician upon Giddeth. And there's there's something behind the word Giddeth. Uh, it means something about the wine or something, I guess. Um, 
I'll tell you this, something about Psalms 81, and <clears throat> there are so many different opinions and ideas about the breakdown, especially in the first four verses, right? It's incredible when you look into it. Um, the theological ideas, the, the you know doctrinal concepts that um, this this particular psalm brings up. It's amazing what um, and everybody seems to have their idea of what it's supposed to mean. I guess that's why Yah gives us the baptism of the Holy Spirit. To the chief musician upon Giddus, a psalm of Asaph. Sing aloud unto Yahweh our strength, and make a joyful noise unto Yah of Jacob. <clears throat> so he's given us instruction right from the beginning. This is what we're to do. Sing aloud unto Yah our strength, because we sing aloud because it's our strength. Why is, our, why is he our strength? We're going to find out. Make a joyful noise unto Yahweh our Elohim, the Yah of Jacob. Take a psalm, bring hither the timbrel, the pleasant harp, with the psaltery. And us here, when we celebrate, well, I'll just use the term, the Feast of Tabernacles, or the Feast of Trumpets, um, we do the same thing. We always have music, we, we uh, um, shout for joy, we bring out the instruments and give praises and sing aloud to the Most High. We make a joyful noise unto Him. So here they're assembling the... The instruction is to sing aloud, assemble the instruments. And the reason is, in verse 3, blow up the trumpet in the new moon in the time appointed on our solemn feast day. So, basically, sound the shofar at the beginning of the month in the time that Yah had already declared in His law on a day such as the sounding of the shofar on the day of remembrance, the solemn set apart in Moedim. And the word, the meaning of the time appointed, <coughs> oh, excuse me, if you look behind the, I, be, I believe it's in the Strong's and the King James, um, when it says this, actually, Pastor covered this, he did a newsletter on the moon, I think, in, 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 in 2012, and if you haven't read it or didn't know about it, its whereabouts, you just go back to the website, download it. You really do need to read it because Pastor did a masterful job of breaking down and uh, about the moon, the moon phases, the conjunctions, and everything else. But if you look at in the time appointed on Psalm eighty-one three, there is a the definition in the in the uh, Strong's is that it says the full moon, right, which is deceptive, and we're going to explain why that is. And again, Pastor covered that, and I did go back, obviously, and as part of my research, look at what he wrote on Psalm 81 in there. And because, again, there's such a varied opinion. Some people claim this only has to do with the Feast of Tabernacles. Some uh, believe that it's talking about um, the Feast of Trumpets uh, or the New Moons. Every beginning, very first month, it's talking about the time appointed, and then they use it in the full moon, meaning on the the middle of the month when the Feast of Unleavened Bread or the Feast of Tabernacles comes in or on the Solemn Feast Day, but that's not what they're saying when you do the breakdown. <coughs> and again, Pastor did a great job in the newsletter breaking this down, so um, with that help, he didn't leave a whole lot of study on my behalf, but um, still, I need to look. So. so the meaning of the time of point is commonly thought to mean in the full moon, but it should be more correctly interp interpreted as meaning the time when the moon is covered or full of darkness with just the sliver of light. So it's not the full moon, it's when it's, it's, it's totally covered, when it's totally black and slivered. When people say the full moon, they get the impression that it's the white moon, but that's not what this is talking about. It's talking about at the very beginning of the month when the moon is completely black, it's covered in darkness. That's the more proper term to it, okay? And in Pastor's newsletter, he said if they would have meant to say white moon, they would have put the Hebrew word in there, but they didn't. They meant full moon or when the moon comes in. So obviously, when you look at Psalms 81.3, it's talking about at the beginning of the month. And then it says on our solemn feast day. I mean, there, it's singular, not plural. And somebody made the argument, well, you know, it can't be trumpets because the word feast in Hebrew is chog, and they didn't, they didn't use um, the word chog or feast to define the day of remembrance or trumpets. 
But that's BS because Leviticus 23 said right at the very beginning, these are the Feast of the Most High, and it lists them all, all seven of them. So this guy's argument didn't merit any looking into. But that's the difference of opinions out there. So that's what it means. So this particular verse, 81.3, is pointing directly at the Day of Remembrance, at the blowing of the trumpets, to bring to memory a remembrance of something specific about that day. Um, and the only other time this you find this um, word um, appointed is in Proverbs 7.20, and it's talking about at a particular time. That's when I think that's when the the uh, the woman that's the, the the adulteress says, "In that day, our master shall come home in the day appointed." All right, in the fullness. Yeah, for the good man is not at home. Proverbs chapter 7, 19 and 20, it says, For the good man is not at home. He is gone on a long journey. He hath taken a bag of money with him and will come home at the day appointed when the day is full. Mm. All right, my notes. Another point that many use to establish the day of remembrance slash trumpets is the time frame in which the Messiah is to return. The moon, new moon is regarded as being over the course of three days, lending to the eye that no man... And that's what Pastor put in his newsletter, too, that because of the conjunction of the moon, I'm not going to get in that teaching like that, but it's basically over the course of three days. You can go back and read the newsletters. But during the three days, um, the pastor explains in the newsletter that you can't know the, the, the time or the hour because it's contained in three days. But it's only on the first day that we're supposed to signify this day of remembrance by the blowing of the trumpet. So I hope I'm making sense. All right, the word appointed, we're going to break it down anyway. It's the Hebrew 3677. Again, that's the word appointed used in Psalm 81.3. And again, the Hebrew 3677, Keith, apparently from the Hebrew 3680. <coughs> it means to properly... Properly, fullness or the full moon. That is, it's festival. And it's from the 3680, Kassa, um, properly to plump, that is to fill up hollows, by implication to cover for clothing or secrecy. So again, it's just defining itself. It's a covering over the moon. Conceal. All right, going back into Psalms, again, chapter 81 on to verse 4. So we know that through Psalm 81 and 83, the, the call is to sing aloud, to make a joyful noise, and obviously in hand is the instruments. And then it tells you what day this is going to be on, the Feast of Trumpets, the Day of Remembrance, and the Blowing of Trumpets. And then on Psalm 81, 4, and it says that this was a statute for Israel and the law of the Yah of Jacob. So, so whoever wrote the psalm is pointing us back that this indeed was a statute or an ordinance written for Israel by the Torah of Yah given to his people, Israel. And again, the word was, for it says for this was, meaning, you know, if you don't, if you, if you don't, if you're not careful, um, I know us is straight away, we know better, but this isn't something that has happened and, and it's no longer something to be observed, but other people may say, well, you know, it says it was, so it's has, and we don't have to deal with it no more. That's a bunch of crap. You know, they could have changed the writing a little bit, but one word here or there, you know how that can really mess it up. But this still is a statute for Israel. And verse 5. This he, meaning Yah, ordained, what did he ordain? This statute for Israel. This he, Yah, ordained or established in Joseph for a testimony or a witness when he went throughout the land of Egypt where I heard a language that I understood not. And that verse there too, Psalm 81.5, there's a lot of uh, uh, injection of thought in that, that particular verse and what where I heard a language that I understood not. Some say that, that it's because of, um, you know, Joseph being Israel, the first one to enter into Egypt, and to make the entrance, he did. He heard a language that he didn't understand. And, you know, you, you've got that proof in the fact that in Genesis 42, 23, you don't have to put this up here, Brother Ugly, and Psalms 114, verse 1, 
that it says, I mean, why would Joseph have to use an interpreter? He didn't have to, we understood, but for the people around him that only spoke, spoke the Egyptian language, he had to use an interpreter to speak between the Hebrews and the, the Egyptians because it was a language that they didn't understand. So it, it's pretty much sealed, right? All right, back to some other biblical uh, uh, verses or other biblical um, meanings behind Psalm 81.5, which is say their uh, um, comparisons, all right? All right, back to the Hebrew Bible by Robert Alter. That's A-L-T-E-R, that's his last name. And he says, and he's written in, in his um, writings, or his, in, uh, what do you want to call it? his translation, for it is an ordinance in Israel, the rule of Yah of Jacob, a decree he declared it for Israel when he sallied forth against Egypt's land, a language I knew not I heard. <laughs> I'll have to read that again. For it is an ordinance in Israel. Remember, he said this is a statute for Israel. He's reading verses 4 and 5 together, and I put them together right here. For it is an ordinance in Israel, the rule of Yah of Jacob, as in Psalms 81, 4 and verse 5, a decree. He declared, or ordained, or established it for Israel when he sallied forth against Egypt's land. So, when he's actually coming against Egypt. So now there's a little bit difference and variance in the language. And actually this is more correct than what the King James because it's giving you an idea of what this day of remembrance was pointing to. The day that Yah sallied forth or, or came against Egypt's land and again, a language I knew not I heard. And the Septuagint, it says, again, verses 4 and 5, I hope I'm not losing anybody. Verses 4 and 5. For this is an ordinance for Israel, a statute of the Yah of Jacob. He made it to be a testimony in Joseph, or a witness, when he came forth out of the land of Egypt. So now the Septuagint is actually saying when they departed, when Israel departed from Egypt. Now, don't get confused. When he's talking about Joseph, actually the context is Israel as a whole. It's just that Joseph was the first one of the Israelites to um, set foot and become, uh, you know, planted in that land. When he came forth out of the land of Egypt, he heard a language which he understood not. And again, basically saying that this is the day to be, to be remembered as the day that Yah liberated his people from the oppression and enslavement of the Egyptians. So, in my conclusion, and what I've learned, especially the Psalms 81, is that this day of remembrance and this blowing of trumpets all the day long was there to remind again, as it was in the Feast of Unleavened Bread, as it was on the seventh day Sabbath day. And that's there, you can find it. And on the Feast of Tabernacles, they all point back to Israel coming out of their captivity, being delivered by the hand of the Most High, being liberated from their enemies. And again, this has profound um, uh, uh, future implications, of course, when Yahshua will come back because he's going to do the same thing as deliver us from our enemies. And then he's going to judge the nations. <laughs> all right. And, uh, all right, the word statute. Okay, we're just going to break this down. Psalm 81, verses 4 and 5. Sometimes this stuff gets so loaded up, I don't know where the best time to insert stuff. But anyway, the word statute, again, in Psalm 81, 4, is in the Strong's uh, Hebrew 27, 06, from Hebrew 27, 10. And it means an appointment. Basically, just an enactment, hence an appointment. So, for this statute, or this appointment, or... Uh, commandment, convenient, custom, decree, uh, the, all the definitions behind uh, the Hebrew 2706 just point back to what the statute was. It was a custom, a decree, an appointment, a special appointed time <coughs> for Israel. And, and the Hebrew 2710 from which 2706 comes from, it means to... Um, to hack that is engraved um, by implication to an act. 
Laws being cut in stone or metal tablets in primitive times are generally prescribed, point decree. So you can understand what the word statute means. And then ordained, again, so this statute was for Israel in verse 5, thus he, Yah, ordained, and I read it before, it just simply means to appoint, establish, or, or found. So that's what we had. So Yah, he established this in Israel for a testimony to us, as a witness for us, or against us. Psalm 81.6, continuing back into Psalms again. Okay, so now let's let's do recap. Verses 1 through 4, right? So we have, again, just to get it back in people's minds, we have right at the beginning, um, sing aloud to the Most High, sing praises, make a joyful noise, and then, again, it's doing it with the instruments. And then we got verse 3 and 4 talking about what particular day this is supposed to happen, which we know now is the day of remembrance, um, the first day of the seventh month, the blowing of trumpets. And then on the uh, fourth and fifth verse, we understand that this was something that Yah specifically gave to Israel. Um, you got to remember now, Abraham said that, Way back there, I forget where it is, but he talked about that he kept the law, statutes, and ordinances of the Most High even before they were written. So people actually had knowledge of this, but this is actually established in Israel when they when they came out of the Exodus. Then it, it, it brought on a whole new extra meaning because it always brought back to their mind the day they got liberated, if I'm making sense. But reading the rest of the Psalms, you're going to see that it goes both ways. So... In verse 6, he said, I removed his, meaning Israel's shoulder, from the burden. His hands were delivered from the pots, or the baskets, or the, or the instruments they used to actually make the bricks. Thou callest me in trouble, which Israel did when they were in bondage, because they were in bitter bondage by the hand of their taskmasters, and they were crying to be delivered. You know, And the thing is, they placed themselves in that position because they actually embraced the idolatrous ways of the Egyptians. That's what got them in that bondage to begin. And you can find that fact mark in, in the book of Ezekiel. Thou callest in trouble, and I delivered thee, meaning I delivered them. I answered thee in the secret place of thunder. And remember, that was one of the judgments on Egypt. I proved thee at the waters of Meribah, Salah. Hear, O my people, and I will testify unto thee, O Israel, if thou wilt hearken unto me. I want you to listen to me. I'm, I've already declared that this. I gave you this feast. I established it in Israel. And the focus is the liberation that you got coming out. And the, and the trumpets are going to herald all day long, reminding you of this liberation. But the trumpets are also going to do something else on this day of remembrance. It's also going to bring to your mind not to repeat the same crap that got you enslaved in the first place. So, going on to verse 9. If you want to listen to me, if you're going to listen to me, I need you to take special note of this. There shall no strange God be in thee. Neither shalt thou worship any strange Elohim, or any God, little L. <laughs> I am Yahweh Elohim, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt, open thy mouth wide, and I will fill it. So he's reminding them again. But my people would not hearken to my voice. Israel, typical Israel. They go so long, they get a just man ruling over them. They do fine for a while, like in the book of Judges, because there was no judge. Or, you know, people went back, every man did that, which is right in his own eyes. Or you have in the days of the king, you got a wicked king up there. And, uh, you know, if the head is wicked, then everybody else is going to follow that. So, but my people would not hearken to my voice, and Israel would not of me. They just totally ignored the Most High. They ignored his warnings. Again, he's bringing it up here in the Psalms. So I gave them up to their own heart's lust, and they walked in their own counsels. Oh, that my people had hearkened unto me, and Israel had walked in my way. So again, here we got, let me see. All right, let me finish this. I, soon, I should soon have subdued their enemies and turned my hand against their adversaries <coughs> if they would have hearkened and listened, but they didn't. Yah would have been their protection. The haters of Yahweh should have submitted themselves unto him 
but they're, they can't. When they're in hatred and enmity against the Most High, they're not going to submit. They're going to be in rebellion. But their times should have endured forever, if they had submitted. But as it is in the case of man and the nature of man, when you have a just, loving, yah, yah, full of mercy and long-suffering, people take advantage of it, just like they do people on this earth who are very long-suffering, very patient, and have a big heart. He should have fed them also with the finest of wheat and with honey out of the rock. Should I have satisfied thee? Again, I believe that the day of remembrance, this holy set-apart memorial, was a day to remember that Yahweh set his people free from the hands of their enemies, the hands of their oppressors. But this day was also a day of reminding Yah's people not to allow the lust of their hearts to enslave them once again. So you had the trumpets, and I believe they were blowing throughout the entire day on the day of remembrance to call to mind to remember not to, first of all, from being liberated in Yah's mighty hand, but also secondly, not to put yourself in the position that you go back and be enslaved again. And, it, you know, I can understand this because people lose track, they lose focus, they f easily forget, you know, so if you've got this, I wonder how long that would last, the blaring of the trumpets in your ears all day, you know, the constant, you know, sounding, and, and you would think that, that that would just hang on, you know, especially when you express it to, you know, the children between one one feast day and the next feast day, and then over time, you know what, this stuff is never going to get lost, right? Because there's something about music, it gets stuck in the head, it gets stuck in your brain. I mean, I'm sure most of you can remember music that you heard growing up, your favorite songs, you can probably repeat the lyrics in your sleep. That's how ingrained music gets, or sounds, musical instruments. Right, that certain sound. So I hope I'm making sense. Um, oh, something else that's interesting too. Like I said, when I broke down the bullet points of seven, that this was the only day of the first day of any of the months. That of course it was called the Sabbath, but typically on the new moon there there was a you know a, a, um, a sacrifice of this animal, one sheep, one one bullock. Or I don't have it all broke down in front of me, but it was just basically a, a standard day of sacrifice. But on the seventh month, on the first day of month, on the day of remembrance, the Sabbath day, of the sounding of the trumpets, the blasting of the trumpets, they had seven sacrifices that day, unlike any other first day of any other month. And obviously there is significance to it because not only is it an appointed feast day, a solemn day, a very serious time, um, but, you know, the, the feast and the sacrifices, the burnt offerings, the peace offering, and there's actually a sin offering on that day, was there to remind the people and to get something into their head. And, you know, it, it, I'm not saying there's a correlation, but, you know, the, the trumpets revelation, there's seven trumpets. It, it's just an observation. I'm not going to try to create a doctrine out of it. That's ridiculous. But anyway, all right, we're going to go back to the... Again, the Old Covenant, all these are coming out of the, um, the Old Covenant, the Old Testament, the Old, uh, the Old Testament. And Nehemiah chapter 1, Nehemiah chapter 1, Nehemiah chapter 8, verses 1 through 12, I think. Yeah, verses 1 through 12. Nehemiah 8, verses 1 through 12. And, of course, those that know the history of Nehemiah and Ezra, um, you know, they had come out of the Medes and the Persian captivities. Um, I don't remember who was the king right now at the top. I had to tell you, as they get older, more of the stuff is starting to disappear, unfortunately. Um, it's more difficult to retain a lot of stuff, but I guess it just has to keep it in front of my eyes to keep it there. But uh, how, what was the name of the, the king? that Nehemiah spoke to. Anyway, it might come to me. But anyway, they had been in captivity, for them captivities, and um, they were allowed to go back out and rebuild Jerusalem, okay? So while they were there, um, in Nehemiah, this historical fact happened to them. And all the people gathered themselves together as one into the main street that was before the water gate, and they spake unto Ezra the scribe to bring the book of the law of Moses, which Yahweh had commanded to Israel. And Ezra the priest brought the law before the congregation both of men and women. 
And all they could hear with understanding upon the first day of the seventh month. So clearly, a lot of things happened in the Word, right? A lot of historical events, a lot of recorded events, but many times there was nothing attached to them as far as, you know, date and time. But here we should, we have clearly that it was on the first day of the seventh month, which we already know is, is the day of remembrance of the, the blowing of the trumpets, right? And so that happened on this day. They bring out the book of the law. Ezra's going to stand before the people and read in the people's ears. And he read therein before the street that was before the water gate from the morning until midday. And he got after it before the men and the women and those who could understand. And the ears of all the people were attentive unto the book of the law because they had lost in captivity. There was no remembrance. They had lost the ways of their people. And a lot for most of them, their ears were virgin completely to hearing this for the first time. So here they are listening. And Ezra the scribe stood upon a pulpit of wood, which they had made for the purpose. And beside him stood Mattatiah and Shema and Aniah and Urijah and Hilkiah and Messiah, however. And on his right hand and on his left hand, Pedadiah, Mishael, Malchiah, and Hashum, and Hashbandana, and Zechariah, and Meshulam. I mean, Alexander Scorby, man, he got them things nailed. <laughs> I ain't got his lips, that's for sure. So anyway, um, and Ezra opened the book in the sight of all the people, for he was above all the people, and when he opened it, all the people stood up. And Ezra blessed the Most High, the great Elohim, and all the people answered, Amen, 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 with lifting up their hands, and they bowed their heads and worshipped the Most High with their faces to the ground. Also, all the names in Nehemiah 8, 7, and the Levites caused the people to understand the Torah, and the people stood in their place. They were hungry. They wanted to hear. The word had been lost to them. So they read in the book of, of Yahweh distinctly, and gave the sense. I mean, they actually caused the people to understand as they were reading. They not only wrote it, but because so much had been lost and nobody had any idea about what these things meant, they had enough in them yet still passed on that they're able to relay what these each ordinance, statutes, commandments actually meant. And Nehemiah, which was a Tershatha, which is the Tershatha, and Ezra the priest, the scribe, and the Levites that taught the people said unto all the people. So now they know the seventh day of the first month. This day is holy unto Yahweh your Elohim. Mourn not, no way, because the people's hearts fell out. They hadn't heard the Torah and they made me weeping for, um, you know, sadness because the stuff had escaped them. And uh, they had been afforded the chance to hear it again. I could understand where the hearts were that, Y'all love them enough to actually to get the word back in their heart. But you have the, the uh, Levites saying that this day is holy. Why? It's the seventh day of the first month, the day of remembrance. We just got done reading the law over the raw, but so you know that this is a fact. <laughs> and this day is holy unto Yahweh your Elohim, more not no weep. For all the people wept when they heard the word of the law. Then he said unto him, Go your way, eat the fat, and drink the sweet. And send portions unto them for whom nothing is. This is a day of feasting, a day of joy, a day of celebrating. For this day is holy unto Yahweh. Neither be ye sorry, for the joy of Yahweh is your strength. So the Levites stilled all the people, saying, Hold your peace, for the day is holy. Neither be ye grieved. And all the people went their way to eat and to drink and to send portions to make great mirth. And if you look up the word mirth, it means blithensomeness. What in the word? Blithensomeness or glee. Boy, some of the words, these people, these definitions, you have to look behind the definitions to get the definitions. But it's glee on a, on a festival. All right? And that, that's the Hebrew 8057 from the Hebrew 8056, if you want to look it up. But so they, they were, and they, they made great mirth, great glee. They had a great time, right? They rejoiced. They had a pleasure. They probably did sing. It doesn't record all that, but obviously um, they were right back into keeping Yah's appointed time right there on that day. All right, Luke chapter 1, verses 60, 
7, verses 75, Luke 1, 67 to 65, uh, 75, 67 to 75. And his father Zacharias was filled with the Holy Spirit and prophesied, saying, Blessed be Yahweh our Elohim of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people. And he hath raised a horn of salvation for us in the house of Dawid, his servant Dawid. And he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began. Wow, what a statement. Since the world began, we've had the holy prophets. That we should be saved from our enemies and from all and from the hand of all that hate us. And the reason I put this in here, because this is talking about our Messiah. Again, this is a reminder about what he's going to do for us when he comes back. Uh, it's kind of like just like the reminder that we have in the day of remembrance and the blowing of the trumpets. That we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us. To perform this mercy promise to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. The oath which he swore unto our father Abraham that he would grant unto us, Israel, his people, that we being delivered out of the hand of the enemies might serve him without fear, about, without fear of our enemies coming to try to overtake us, in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. And of course we know that's coming in the kingdom age. And I'll leave you with this. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 51-52. And Paul writes to the church of Corinth, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. All right, glory to the King. That concludes the study on um, the day of remembrance, the, the blowing of the shofar, the blowing of the trumpets on this day. And um, I hope I was able to bring some understanding to this and some, um, uh, you know, more of an idea what this particular feast encompassed and what it meant. Obviously, all Yah's feast days are incredibly significant, and we really need to dwell and think on them. Um, and I'm sure that, uh, I hope that Israel is doing that, you know, even right now in the days leading up to the feast. In fact, it should be something that's always in the forefront of our minds. We talk about uh, the word at a great enough length. But um, again, I appreciate y'all um, joining me tonight. And hey, if somebody ever finds out the exact significance to what Yah declared in Leviticus 23 and Numbers 29 is concerning this day, other than what I gave it, I'd like to see it because I can't find it. I looked everywhere. Unlike all the other feast days, they, they declare and they're written of what the true intended purpose is. But this day, for some reason, the closest we ever had was Psalm 81. And I believe it had to do with the coming out of Egypt and the reminder not to go back in again. Yeah, Brother Ugly, we miss you too. Yeah, the border still closes. Ridiculous, tyrannical governments. Anyway, bless you, Brother Ugly. But, uh, hey, bless you, saints. Again, appreciate your time, your ear, and for tuning in tonight. And I hope you have a blessed week. Remember, pray for, pray for our shepherd, Pastor Dow. Uh, pray for your leaders. Pray for those that uh, are in head of your fellowships. And pray for each other um, that we may be healed. You all have a blessed week. This is Elder Becker, Douglas Becker, signing out. Hey, much shalom. Look at him looking.